Hey guys, Spawner is here. Welcome back to episode 4 of the Game Maker Studio tutorial series. So, what I want to cover today, um, it's not really going to be much of an applied tutorial. Um, I basically want to cover the basic mathematical functions and expressions within Game Maker. Now, these they have absolutely lots of applications. Um, yeah, you'll be using mathematical formulas almost everywhere throughout your game maker project. Um, like, since game design as a whole and computer programming in general relies heavily on math. Um, now, I've built a small project here, it's just got a room and an object. Um, yeah, the room is just like basic, it's 560 by 940. Uh, oh, sorry, 960 by 540. And I've got an object and I've done a couple of things to it. Um, the first thing, it has a create event and inside this code uh, there's two variables, a and b, they both equal true and then the output equals false. So um, I'm going to actually set these to false because um, it'll make more sense to do it that way. Oh, if I can actually spell right today. Um, yeah, so then in the step event yeah let's get rid of this, this is going to be empty for the time being uh, the draw event, what this does, this basically outputs the value of each variable so a, b and the output and then if you press the a key uh, it sets a to true or false depending on whatever current state it's in so if a equals true a is unset to false otherwise a is set to true um, and it's the same for the B key. You press B, it does the same for the variable B. So, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be playing about with these variables and showing you guys how you can use them. So, the first thing I want to get into is logic gates. Now, as far as I'm aware, there are three logic gates within Game Maker from what I've been reading on the internet. There is a AND gate. Um, a OR gate or a ZOR gate. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're mentioned here. Now, yeah, I've got another page up here and it specifies what these things actually are. So, in computing, these are like relied upon heavily. Um, let's say, for example, an AND gate. Uh, you take two inputs. If one of them is true, but the other one isn't, it will output nothing. Um, likewise for the other input, if that is true and it outputs no value, but if both of them are true, it will output value. So, um, yeah, logic gates have got different functions, um, and what we're going to be covering today is AND, OR, and ZOR. Now, an AND gate basically combines two values, so if like, one variable is true and another variable is true, then output blah 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 blah. Um, that's basically what it's saying here. So let's just write some code. Um, if we go to the step event and we're going to write some code here, let's just say if a and oh, b, notice they highlight in blue, um, it will actually be different for the game maker theme and like default one, but so if A and B both equal true, then it's gonna set output to equal true. Now I'm also gonna cover these at a later date, um yeah, within the tutorial or a later time should I say, but also, I want to cover the arithmetic operators within Game Maker. It's pretty simple, but um, so and then else. Uh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Open brace output is equal to false, like that, and that's the end of statement. So if I run this game now, and then I play about with A or B, so if A and B both equal zero, so the output is zero. A is 1, B is not, the output is 0. So but that's because A and B are not equal to 1. But the minute I press B, the output will equal 1. Now, if I turn my mouth off, output equals 0. Likewise, if I 
make V1, output will be 0. Um, so both of them have to be like equal, so or what any state you put them in. So A and well A and B both equal one, so output is one. So that's an AND gate. Now what I want to cover now is a OR gate. So here's where it gets interesting. So an OR gate is a little like an AND gate, but it only specifies one input and not two. So let's just say input two equals one, it'll output one. Or if input one is one, it'll output one. But if both of them are one, then the output will be one. So let's just show that in practice. If I run this project again, so A is one, the output is one. B is one, the output is one. If both of them are one, the output is one. So that's A or B, essentially. Now, the interesting thing is the ZOR gate. Now, I wasn't particularly too familiar with this, um, but it does have a lot of useful applications for the looks of things. Um, so, let's change that from an OR gate to a ZOR gate. Um, so, ZOR gate is rather complex. Um, the ZOR, exclusive OR, as it's actually called, gate acts in the same way as a logical either OR. The output is true if either both, uh, oh, if either but not both of inputs are true. Uh, if the output is false, if both inputs are false, um, or if both inputs are true. So, um, let's just look at that in practice. So, run the game again. So, if A is 1, it will output 1, and then if B is 1, it will output 1, if A and B are 0, it will output 0, if A and B are 1, it will output 0. So that's essentially a ZOR gate. Um, now, yeah, they're the three basic um, mathematical logic gates within Game Maker as far as I'm aware um, but there are others um, and you can get quite into depth with this stuff so there's a NAND gate, a NOR gate, an XNOR gate um, and yeah like it <laughs> there's lots and lots of these different types of gates um, please correct me if I'm like wrong about how many are specified in Game Maker but as far as I'm aware there are only a AND gate, OR gate, or ZOR gate within Game Maker. Um, now, the other thing I want to cover quickly is expressions. Now, I'm not going to be showing much of these, um, but you need to correctly check if your variable, like, oh, I've just spilled my tea. <laughs> um, please excuse me. Right, yeah, so. You need to check if like a variable is like, well, to, you don't even need to check, should I say. Let's just say um, you want to apply basic maths to a formula, so I don't know, A plus B is equal to C. Um, so let's just go to the draw event and... What's just actually if that might be easier if I change that to output. So at the minute, what this is gonna do, this is just gonna add the two variables. Um oh assignment operator needed. Uh why what's it doing? Maybe I need to change that to output equals a plus b. That might make some more sense. Uh, let's try that. There we go. Right, so if A is 1, then press B, the output is 2. So, it's fairly simple really, you know addition, it's like basic, like, primary school maths. Um, but then, yeah, there's lots of these assignment operators, so I'm just going to cover them fairly quickly. Um, yeah, you've got the addition one, which is a plus, so that's, oh, I didn't mean to do that, addition, if I can actually type correctly today, right, and then you've got the minus symbol, that is 
subtraction. Um, and then you got an asterisk. Uh, that is multiplication. Uh, then you've got a forward slash that acts as a uh, division symbol. Uh, you've got an equal symbol, so you use that in a mathematical expression. So if a plus b, well, yeah, a plus b equals c. So uh, that basically sets a variable. So set variable equal to whatever <laughs> um, now there's also another one there is two equals what that does that checks if a variable is equal to whatever so um, one equal sign sets it two equal signs check it so that checks if a variable is equal to whatever. Right then, here's where it gets a bit more trickier. So, you've got greater than or less than in maths. So, um, let's say you've got A is greater than B. Um, the other thing about these things is that the direction is important. So, in this instance, A will be greater than B. Um, then you've got the less than symbol. That will be A is less than B. Um, now you can have less than or greater than or equal to. So let's just say um, A could be greater than. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I keep hitting the wrong key. Uh, or equal to B. So A is never less than B, but it's always greater or equal to it. Um, then you can have. A is less than or equal to B. Um, yeah, that basically checks if A is less than or equal to B. So B is always greater than A in this instance, or equal to A. Um, it's never less than A. Um, now, there are others as well, and I believe I'm missing one where there is a modulus symbol. So that is that one right there. Let's just say A modulus of B. Um, what that will do, uh, that will look for the remainder of B, as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm a little unsure about that, so let's just see what the modulus symbol does. What does the sign mean? Modulus. Right then, so might be better actually looking in Game Maker. <laughs> right, uh, actually, no, sorry, that's wrong. That that's when A is not equal to B, as far as I'm aware. Uh, forgive me about that. Um, the exclamation is basically a not like specifier, so um, I should mention this. Uh, you can have and. Um, or you can use uh, two and symbols like that. You can have an or, or use two pipe symbols like that. Or there is zor. Oh, if I can spell it right. And I'm I'm not actually too sure of a zor operator. Um, I'm not actually sure if it does have its own exclusive operator symbol. Uh, it won't say it here. Um, ah, yeah, it's that one. Um, I'm not sure what them symbols are. I believe that is like, uh, yeah, that's specifying like to the power of that's a power symbol. So if you use two of them, that's equal to Zor. Um, now. Getting back to the modulus symbol, um, yeah, what the modulus symbol does, it actually looks for a remainder um, in a divisible number. So uh, let's just say that draws C, that draws uh, D, 
and the output equals C modulus D. So what that's going to do is going to divide 70 by 7, well take away 7 from 70 over and over again. Um, so 70 divided by 7 equals 10 um, and there's no remainder from that. So the output of the modulus symbol is 0. Um, but let's just say we go to the creative end and we change this variable. Let's just say, I don't know, 75. The modulus of C to D will now be 5 uh, because it can't divide by 5 into a whole number ratio. So yeah, that's correct. Um, so it's just a... Uh, in all fairness, I've never actually seen much application of a modulus symbol. Um, well, I haven't really used them much in code, but they do have their applications here and here and everywhere. Um, but yeah, like a modulus symbol, it can be quite uh, helpful at times. So yeah, the modulus of that will actually be 2 because 7 divided by 77 is 11, and obviously you've got a 2 remainder. So the modulus of that should be 2, as far as I'm aware. And that is correct. So, yeah, that's a modulus symbol anyway. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, everyone. I just wanted to cover some basic mathematical operations. Um, yeah, there isn't really much to it, but like they are important in terms of computer programming and I really did want to get this sort of stuff out of the way like in the old tutorials so um, I hope you've enjoyed this video please don't forget to like it subscribe to my channel if you're not already um, yeah leave some feedback and comments if you find these tutorials helpful in any way shape or form and I hope to see you in the next one so I will catch you later guys peace out <laughs>